Today on WBTV, big shit happened in Dead by this week. The fifth anniversary stream happened on Tuesday, and today we're going to be telling you guys all about Resident Evil, the Resident Evil chapter, and what's coming. But for those of you who missed that fifth anniversary stream, stay tuned for Friday's video. We're going to tell you all about what's coming in the six-year roadmap, the realm beyond, new additions to the game, updates to graphics, and everything else like that. So without further ado, let's get into the Resident Evil chapter, the different perks, and everything that involves. Okay, so I watched the whole stream on the, on that day, or pretty much most of it. I missed a little bit, but I watched pretty much most of it. Blake, unfortunately, wasn't able to watch a good part of the stream. Um, I was they, literally in for the Resident Evil part, and then I was out. Yeah, so yeah. That's all I had time to watch. They also did not talk about the perks for the Resident Evil chapter in the stream. That wasn't something we saw until the PTB was released. I I think they kind of talked about it in the stream a little bit, but they yeah. They did, yeah. They named them, but they didn't really explain what what they did in extent. I think I think they mentioned, yeah, one of them spawns a flashbang on the map. Yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah. So without further ado, the big reveal was uh we are we are the the, the killer is the nemesis from Resident Evil 3. The map is Raccoon City Police Station. It's a hybrid map. It's an indoor-outdoor map. It's three stories. It's probably one of the biggest maps that's been in Dead by so far. Um, and then the two survivors are Jill Valentine and Leon S. Kennedy, who I believe are from Resident Evil 2? Uh, I think one is from Resident Evil 2, the other is from Resident Evil 3. Okay. Okay. I, they're from separate games. I know that yeah. for a fact because in Jill Valentine's game, the other uh, character you can play as, his name is Chris. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, but oh, I mean, like aside from survivors, like I was already hyped that oh, we're gonna get two new survivors. Jill Valentine's a super cool survivor. Leon S. Kennedy is pretty cool as well. Yeah, but more so. It's been like a year since we got a new map. True, We're getting true. a new map. Yeah. Like, literally, the last new map was Pyramid Head. Yeah. The last new map was Midwich. And that was at the fourth year anniversary. So yeah. it's literally been a year since we've gotten a new map. When we were used to one a new map every three months. Yeah. So with the graphics update taking up so much time, this new map being three stories, being Resident Evil, it's so exciting. Like, that, I think, is, like, aside from Nemesis getting the killer being the killer that everyone wanted or the majority yeah. of people wanted the yeah. new map i think is like the highlight of this yeah and uh the other super hype thing about this map is like we've never really like okay a lot of maps you could definitely claim are hybrid maps because they have a uh, indoor building and an outdoor building but this is like like an indoor map like similar to midwich but it has a large outdoor section of the map so it's basically kind of like midwich if it had a yard or a parking lot or something like that which we've never really seen a lot of maps a lot of maps like midwich which i would consider an indoor map they kind of have the courtyard and then they have the outdoor areas by the exit gates like on um larry's memorial or not larry's memorial uh yeah yeah no, Larry's it is. memorial yeah so th this is kind of the first map of its kind where you could loop in and out of a building um, that that's very detailed because normally when we see buildings like on Ormond, the building is not as detailed because it's more of an outdoor map. Yeah, there's normally one central place on outdoor maps, like a few central buildings that you can go inside. Or on indoor maps, there's normally small, like sometimes small little places that you can go outside with. But as Wade's saying, it's a lot closer to more of a 50-50 indoor outside than we've ever seen. Yeah, and everybody I've heard about this map, uh, it's apparently looks very good. Uh, and, you know, like like as Blake said, if we're waiting this long for a map, we, we want a juicy map, and I think this yeah. is a juicy map. So, you know, hopefully we get to play lots of games on this map soon. So next, let's get into Nemesis, because, okay, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that I honestly do believe that Nemesis is going to be top tier dead by daylight killer when he comes out so and see 
I haven't even seen <laughs> gameplay from like I've been completely like free of spoilers basically. Like I haven't seen any perks, any gameplay, nothing from the PCB. So all I saw was that he has a blue rift in the ground and he's got tentacles. So I'm like, please don't tell me it's just Pyramid Head's ability. And that was my question for you before this video, Wade. I'm like, please tell me his ability is not something lame, just like a reskin of Pyramid Heads. Yes. So. Okay, so his ability, I would say, almost has three parts. So. Oh, first... let's go. Let's go. Okay, okay. For, first of all, <laughs> first of all, we have the first AI uh assisted killer in dead by daylight oh that's right the zombies yeah so uh he's assisted by zombies zombies come up to you they can injure you and down you both um there there's only one way to kill a zombie and that is to pallet stun it although you can blind a zombie with a flashlight too hmm. however the nemesis can also kill zombies in case of bloody body blocking and things like that but the zombies automatically walk to the nearest survivor so this is the first thing where he almost has elements of doctor as he's very easy to find killers as for the nemesis himself the zombies are highlighted on his screen so he could go to zombies which could help him lead him to find survivors so that's that number is one. very strong yeah number two already is, that high level tracking ability yeah 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 it's really it's really strong number two he has uh his his T virus, I think, is what they called it. Yeah, the the T virus, which lets him use his tentacle to attack survivors, also making him stronger. So his tentacle, as Blake said, it's kind of similar to Pyramid's head's ability. It comes out of his hand, and it kind of whips, but it it whips kind of in a line. So it's a range attack. He can hit over pallets. Um, he can hit through windows with the tentacle. But he also uses his tentacle similar to killers that have a chainsaw to break pallets, breakable doors, and other things like that. So there's less of a animation that it takes for him to do stuff like that. He just whips with his tentacle and breaks a pallet. So how can he hit over pallets then? He can... He if he can, breaks pallets. There, there's there been some problems on the PTB with people trying to hit over a pallet and accidentally having the tentacle lock on the pallet. But, for example, if a killer goes to drop a pallet and he uses his tentacle, he can't hit over the pallet in some instances yeah i still find that confusing like you said if it hits over the pallet like pyramid heads but it also breaks it like a chainsaw like yeah that doesn't make sense i feel like it should be one or the other like i feel like yeah I don't it, know. It, it does do one or the other but there's problems in the ptv with it doing the one that they don't want it to do which is causing problems for killer mains um and then this uh using his tentacle it takes him three hits to down a survivor. The first hit oh. he infects the survivor with a virus. Now, I am not really 100% sure what the viruses do. I believe they give Nemesis more power or ability or something like that. But when survivors are infected with the virus, that's the first hit. The second hit deals damage, and the third hit downs them. And then he also, like every killer, curry, killer he has his M1, which is just he punches you with, with his big Thanos fist. I definitely like that. I really like how they made it three hits instead of just the two. Because if it was just the two, then it would be Pyramid Head's ranged attack. That, it, it literally would be Pyramid's Head ranged attack, but it can break pallets. And it's probably a smaller hitbox. But yeah. like now that it does something else interesting... And it takes three hits to injure a survivor you may prioritize if you've already like infected them with a virus just to go for the m1 hit yeah so i don't know yeah yeah it's and for the viruses for survivors there is only a very very limited number of vaccines and in order to get them you have to search specialty chests that have the vaccines and then you collect the vaccine kind of like an item and you can run around with it until you either use it on you or somebody else. But they, the way they talked, it sounds like there's very, very limited number of these vaccines. So it's not going to be like plague where you're going to cleanse every time you get sick. You might use it once or twice in a game. So I mean, yeah, that is. So it's like he has like an element of like plague, like you said, where you, he infects you, and then it's kind of like pig as well. Like he, he has like elements of pig and plague where you have to go around and he wastes your time. Trying to find a vaccine and he gains power like plague 
from having you infected. He has range like Pyramid Head. He has detection like Doctor, but better because they are like his Doctor things, but they actually attack you like a victor. Yeah. Like, he has so many different elements from multiple different killers all into one and it's like it's crazy like and then like on top of him the nemesis himself being a powerful killer you have zombies going around and like on the ptv there's been a lot of people just getting insta down by zombies because like it's something you're just not used to in the game these things wandering around you're working on a generator the zombie Do comes zombies behind trigger you. spine chill or no because spine chill is for killers right i wouldn't think so but i'm assuming that they would make a lot of noise similar to victor i don't believe victor uh triggers spine chill but he makes a lot of noise i think i also really like the zombie aspect as well because it adds more counterplay to survivors and specifically a yui kimura perk any means necessary which allows you to pick up a pallet, comes yeah. in a lot more valuable on this map and while versing the nemesis, because if you can only destroy the zombies with a pallet, then that's wasting a ton of pallets. But if yeah. you kill the zombies by dropping a pallet, then you can instantly pick it back up with a perk. Like, that is insanely good for survivors. So, yeah. like, honestly, I may start running any means necessary because depending on how much you verse nemesis and how good nemesis is, because, like, if the zombies are that much of a problem, you may have to run and it means necessary so you're not wasting pallets, right? Yeah. The other yeah. thing that would be interesting to see is I have seen a little bit of play on the PTV where Killer has led survivors to a point where they're body blocked by a zombie and then the zombie downs mm -hmm. them. So Killer is kind of working together with that AI aspect, which I think would be pretty cool in a, in a game. So definitely, like, something that we've never seen before in a Killer and like just from watching gameplay and like as blake said he pretty much has aspects for majority of killers i do think now obviously this is ptb he might get a nerf before he comes out but i do think that he's definitely going to be one of the most powerful killers in the game similar to pyramid head if not higher because he definitely seems to have definitely higher yeah he definitely seems to have similar game mechanics to Pyramid Head in a way, with more, with the zombies and the tracking and everything else like that. Again, yeah, he has similar and kind of lesser elements to some killers, but also better elements to other killers. Like, he just has so many tools that I don't think he can be bad. Like, just when they give killers that many toolkits, they just, it, they're setting them up for success. Like, Freddy, he yeah. can make fake pallets. He can um, put the blood trails down. He can teleport to gens. And then he has the whole dream world that makes him half invisible if you're not asleep. And then you have to go wake up if you are asleep. And he has an insane lunch. So just, and Freddy is a top tier because of all the abilities they gave him. So yeah. Nemesis having even more and debatably stronger abilities or similar strength abilities as Freddy. Yeah, like he's super looking super strong so without further ado let's take a look at some of the perks we have here so first let's take a look at the nemesis perks um here we go uh lethal peruser at the start of the trial the auras of all survivors are revealed to you for five seconds they may be unlocked in the blood web of the nemesis for level 30 plus in the shrine of secret this perk basically uh is like barbecue and chili except it only works at the beginning of the game i was actually watching a live stream and in the chat they mentioned this perk and it's okay i don't think it's super strong though like it'll it'll, it'll instantly help you find a survivor right off the bat but yeah. it's, it's useless for the rest of the game it will so. definitely help with newbie killers who have trouble like getting the beginning of their game going because they can't find survivors but for more experienced killers, it's not anything new. Barbecue and chili is going to be a way better perk. Next, we have Hysteria. Whenever you put a healthy survivor in the injured state with a basic attack, all injured survivors suffer from the oblivious status effect for 20 seconds. Oh. Hysteria can I mean, that's only interesting. once every 60 seconds. Again, interesting, but I don't think... I feel like it may be more effective on other killers. Like, Probably. I feel like that may be more effective on stalking killers. Yeah. Because say you put a survivor into the injured state, and then you, you switch off to another survivor, 
or like I don't know oblivious if oblivious masks also like spirits phasing noises it could be good on spirit like I can see that that's a more situational perk yeah. but yeah I, I think that could be good that could be strong I mean, maybe on, like, uh, Freddy, because he TPs to Jen, so he could... Or Nurse, like, someone who TPs a lot, as you say, yeah. Spirit. Because then they'll use that to switch off on somebody else. I mean, yeah, my thought process was even a stalking killer. Like, Michael Myers, they get Tier 3, they put someone into the injured... Or is it only injured, not dying? Ah, uh, yeah, injured. Okay, well, like, say Michael Myers hits someone, injures them, and then he wants to get more stock. And there's an injured survivor working on a Jen... He's tier 2, so they think he has a higher terror radius, Yeah. but his terror radius is concealed if you're oblivious. And it's the same thing with Ghostface. He injures someone, instead of having to wait for his stealth ability co to come back, he can just, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe Legion, like, that's kind of his thing, injured people and then aggro on somebody else. Does applying the deep wound count as injuring them? No, that's not I'm a basic not sure. attack. No, it's I don't think so. Injuring them with a basic attack. Yeah. So... Yeah. Again, situational, but could be interesting. And then finally, Eruption. After kicking a generator, its aura is highlighted in yellow. When you put a survivor in the dying state with a basic attack, every affected generator explodes, registering their progress, or sorry, regressing their progress by 6% and causing the auras to disappear. Any survivor repairing a generator when it explodes will scream and suffer from the incapacitated status effect for 10 seconds. Eruption has a cooldown of 90 seconds. So the incapacitated is what we saw when you have Victor on your back. It basically means you can't work on gens. You can't unhook. You can't do anything uh, other than okay. vault. And yeah. So that is like... That's a lot of shit having it at once. Like, if you had kicked like four generators... And then uh, you put a survivor in the dying state... And four of them explode, regress 60%. And then a whole bunch of survivors scream and get incapacitated. And they can't seconds. work on the gens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that. that's a big thing. But once that's again, huge. I think it could be situational. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't I don't think that one's situational at all, dude. Uh, you, all you got to do is go around, kick a few gens, kill a survivor. All the gens pop and any anyone trying to gen rush you is now stopped. True. So... It's, like, it's, it's kind of similar to Pop the Weasel, except it affects more generators at a lower percentage. But I mean, it also stalls survivors. Like, it physically, it gives you, it basically gives you 20 seconds to hook that survivor without yeah. any gen progression. And then if they start working on the gens, now you can combo that with Pop Goes the Weasel, go over to the gen. If they started working on it again, kick it. Yeah. Or if they started working on it again, boom, you got instant momentum to find them because they waited 20 seconds by the gen, etc., etc. And then if they didn't work on the gen at all, it's been regressing by an extra 6% and furthermore, right? Yeah. So, like, I, like, yeah, I don't see anything bad with this perk. There's no downsides. This perk is really good. Yeah. I think this is the best perk. Uh, next on to Jill Valentine. Uh, we're, we're I love there. when they give us two survivors, dude. You yeah, get yeah, six yeah. new survivor perks. Mwah. Good stuff. Gotta, gotta get get the blood points. To unlock these <laughs> perks. Yeah, you gotta start saving up. Yeah. So first perk is Counterforce. Uh, you cleanse totems 20% faster after cleansing a totem. You see the aura of the farthest totem fr uh, from you for two seconds. Gain an additional 20% stackable speed bonus. Uh, cleansing totems for the remainder of the trial. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one, this one, I also heard about, and oh, I love it. Like, I may yeah. not use it, but it's such a good part. Like, it's uh, like just quicker totem cleansing. If someone's camping their noed or someone's camping in devour, we literally had a game a few days ago where we were trying to cleanse a totem, and they just kept camping it. They camp, yeah. they, they, they kept camping their hex. So if you have like a survivor who's like comboed this with inner strength so you can get a quicker heal off during the entire game and they've gotten like two inner strength heals they they cleanse totems at 40 percent extra quicker speeds they come in and they just insta pop that like ruin or insta pop that noed or devour yeah. like yeah that, that's like situational but still like very strong yeah 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 like as blake said i don't really think i would use this uh in a daily build probably not 
but I might put it on for a kill your friends or something, you know, some, something yeah. to try out, use. Uh, I mean, I'll definitely play with it when I first get it. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna not, it's not one of the parts where I'll be like, yeah, that's cool, but I'm not using it. This is a perk I'm like, that's a good perk. I'll yeah. try playing with it and then go back to my main build. Yeah, next we have Resurgence. Gain 40% healing progress instantly after being unhooked or unhooking yourself. So, like, similar to Will Make. So you instantly heal to 40%? Yeah. Oh, so... Oh! Actually, I, I wouldn't be wow. Will Make it. It would be similar to uh, the, the Steve perk. Uh, well, Babysitter instantly heals you. Yeah. After 32 seconds. It puts you broken for, like, 30 seconds, and then you instantly heal if you yeah. unhook someone earlier. But, yeah, exactly. This is, like, a deliverance or, like... It's not even like Deliverance, but it could combo with Deliverance. You unhook yourself, instantly 40% healed. You got a med kit, heal yourself up the rest of the way. Like, yeah. Yeah. Again, good perk. Like, yeah. not bad. Her last perk is Blast Mine. A Blast Mine activates oh, after completing a total of 66 worth of repair worth of repair progress on generators. So that, that, like that's cumulative. Like 66%? Yeah. Or... Yeah, sixty six percent, but it doesn't have to be on one generator, it can be through a couple of generators in the trial. Um, so you literally get three gens to ten per or, or three gens to twenty percent and you get this yeah. thing spawning in? Oh wow, yeah. okay. After repairing a generator for at least three seconds, press the active ability button to install a trap that stays active for thirty five seconds. After affected generators will be revealed to survivors by a yellow aura only one trap can be active on a generator when a killer comes to damage the ge the trap generator the trap explodes stunning them and blinding everybody nearby blast mine oh is then def defective for the rest of the game so it only works once that's still so cool like yeah like we we've seen other perks where you're messing with the killer or it's like fighting against the killer like red herring diversion like you make false status effects or you make false sounds to mess with the killer and like you even have um uh head on by jane romero you hop into a locker and you can instantly stun a killer with that perk but like this you're you're setting a trap for a killer on a gen and there's actually something that deters like it, it, it's like it's like that one perk that cheryl mason has i think that I've I didn't hear about I didn't know about it until a few days ago, but apparently you can block the gen. Like you can use the entity's power to block a gen yourself, yeah. so a killer can't kick it. So it's another one of those perks from preventing a killer to kick a gen, which I think is like it is super strong for survivors. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely see that one being a little bit situational because the trap is only active for a certain amount of seconds. Um, it's kind of hit or miss if the killer actually does it, but it's one of those when it does happen, it, it could come in clutch, similar to power strength. Yeah, it's, yeah. A little bit situational, but when, when it does happen, you know, it's going to come in clutch. And are those all of Jill's perks or all of Leon's perks? Those are all of Jill's perks. Damn, Jill has three great perks. Like, yeah. again, a little situational, but they all are not bad. Like, yeah. all of them have value in my eyes. So wow wow the perks they're coming out with this update wow yeah. let's go resident evil chapter let's go <laughs> so next on to leon his first perk is called bite the bullet uh you make no noise uh including grunting sounds of pain when healing there is an there is no noise notification on he failed healing skill checks and oh. healing regresses by only three percent so this is similar i don't know what it's called but i think there's a perk that masks your failed skill checks on a generator or something like that yeah i think it's like technician and it's a fang min perk yeah so so this yeah. is kind of similar to that except it's for healing which i mean not bad but once again yeah, it's kind okay. of for newbies yeah uh, next, flashbang. After completing 70% progress on any generator, a flashbang activates. Enter a locker while empty-handed and press the active ability button to craft a flash grenade. One charge detonates with a loud bang and a flashlight, creates a noise distraction, and can be used to distract or blind. 
You leave the flash grenade behind when escaping the trial. May be unlocked in the blood web. Okay, you don't need to know that. Yeah. And there's no limit on who can get or how many times you can get a flashbang, right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say that there's one right now. So say I go gen rush with my friends. We all have the flashbang perk. We all get the flashbang. We all get the gen 100% oh complete. God. We all go hide in a locker and we all press the active. We're all crafting away on our yeah. flashbangs. We all just now got a firecracker. It's like, it's like the Chinese got... New Year event, but exactly. on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Because now every time you complete a Jenny, you get a new flashbang. Yeah. What the? What the? That is insane. They're going to yeah. nerf that. They're so going to nerf that. Definitely. No way that's not staying as it is. I, oh feel, I feel like they'll put a limit on it. 100%. They'll do something like the mine, the trap mine. Like yeah. the mine, sure it stops them from doing the gen. Like the mine is so weak compared to this this yeah. you get so much more value from yeah yeah but this is definitely like a great perk like like i mean it depends it you, you don't get to equip any items in order to use it or you can equip an item but you have to drop it in the trial so for people who like to equip items not the best perk but for putting in a perk that you can have an item that you can use like almost unlimitedly through the through the map like it doesn't have a cooldown that's pretty good. I mean, it depends on if they nerf it and add a cooldown, but like, without that, I think that's better than an item. Yeah, like literally, like when survivors getting chased, you got because flashbangs, like you don't. That's if someone, if the killer is picking up someone, you drop a flashbang in front of them, and you time it right, they instantly drop the survivor. It's like a flashlight stun. You're in a chase. They're about to hit you. You drop a firecracker to run away and hide. And if you get it every single time you complete yeah. a generator, again, like, holy, like a teammate's getting chased. Say a teammate stalls someone for one gen length. You quickly pop the gen. They're about to go down. Go hide in the locker. Go find them. Drop the firecracker. Save them. Like, it's so good. Yeah. There's so many uses for this. Like, you can drop it to cause a distraction by giving off a false alert and yeah. sound effect. Like, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. free firecrackers for multiple survivors and multiple times. Yeah. Like, or you can be like me and walk up to Blake and drop a firecracker in front of him <laughs> at the start of the match. <laughs> I mean, you know? Yeah. Why not? You'll get, you'll get one back later. Just yeah. finish another gen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last perk, Rookie Spirit. Complete five good or great skill checks while repairing a generator to activate Rookie Spirit for the remainder of the trial. Once active, you can see the aura of all regressing generators. So this perk, um, uh, somebody kind of said on a stream that I was watching, it's very good for playing solo because you're not communicating on comms. So you can see regressing generators to help like kind of conserve gen progress. You're not going to have somebody who almost fully completed a generator and you don't know it because you're on the opposite side of the map and then it's kind of wasteful. But in the end, not the best perk for playing a four man. And I wouldn't really say it's the strongest perk. It's interesting though. You said all you have to do is complete six skill checks, good Five. or great. Five. Yeah. On a generator or just in general skill while checks. repairing your generator yeah so and it's good or great right yeah so it's literally just bring a toolbox into the trial get five skill checks while using the toolbox now you can see regressing generators i mean i don't really see why they'd add hit five skill checks yeah. like because it's an easy task it's not something hard to do i guess it's so you can't like instantly have this perk but even so even if you instantly had it again like you said yeah. it's not that strong you wouldn't but see anything cool. in the beginning of the match anyways there's no regressing generators. exactly <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah. sure behavior why not yeah okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the resident evil chapter like honestly folks if you're if you don't know what chapter to buy buy this one like uh, for for the what was it like seven ninety nine for a chapter like fifteen or something like that? I think. Yeah, I think they'll probably it's normally seven ninety nine for like a killer and survivor, but since there's two survivors and it's licensed Resident Evil, 
Yeah. They will probably make it a little bit more expensive, but but like if you're gonna buy one, would probably be the cap. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna buy one, this is the one. Like you get you get Nemesis, probably one of the most powerful killers in the game. I think. Um, you get both the sur- you get two survivors with like six great perks, and you know some more situational than others, but yeah, none of yeah. them are bad. In my, yeah. Yeah, like definitely for people just wondering what chapter should I buy, like this is the best chapter we've seen in a while. Like, yeah. the Trickster was good, um, Twins, not talk about that. <laughs> and, and Blight was like kind of a letdown, like I thought he was going to be better than he very was. Very fun killer, very interesting idea, yeah. but exactly, he just wasn't as strong as he could have been. Yeah, so like I would say th- like this is the best we've seen since Pyramid Head. Uh, which has been a year and we get a new map so it's all good in game you can get all this on june 15th uh and that's when it's released and then you can come play for those of you on pc you can play on the ptb right now uh it's still live and up and everything so you can go play with your tentacle and uh you know all that fun stuff so anyways guys thank you guys for watching this episode of wb2b definitely a lot of hype here coming with the resident evil chapter uh, on Friday, we'll be talking about the Year 6 Roadmap, the Realm Beyond, um, everything like that. So without further ado, thank you guys for watching this episode of WBTV. Like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you played the chapter, what you think of it, if you're going to buy it. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys. Oh, share it with your family. Share it with your friends. <laughs> share it with a guy at Freshco. Can't forget that. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching WBT. If you want to see more videos like this one, click the video on the right. If you want to see skits, click the video on the left. And make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video.